FactSet website, you see the following screen after you log in. To get here, you simply click on the website, you click on login, and then you enter your credentials and enter your verification code. So once in FactSet, you click this button and it shows you the screening tab. Now all of these things are very, very useful. But to get large amounts of data simultaneously, you need to go to screening. So that's the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to collect large amounts of information simultaneously. So from multiple bonds over multiple countries, from multiple, etc. So a large scale of firms or bonds or equities or anything like that together. Now, you need two things for this. For the static information, you need to go to the screening tab, which we're currently at. But for the market information, but for the time series information, so not just something which is the same for the firm at any point in time, like the country or the industry, but something which fluctuates over time, like the market cap or total assets or something like that, you need to use another item. For this, you need to use the Excel plugin, but we'll get to that in the next video. So in this video, we get the identifiers and some static information for all the firms. And we need those identifiers to use the FactSet Excel plugin. Let's start off with a basic equity screen. Here you see a lot of items, but they are all very specific. So if you just want annual reports or something like that, with information which is on annual reports for firms, you simply click the start of screen. This will open you the basic page with only the SP500 firms on it. <clears throat> the screen consists of two parts. The first part is the selection of all the firms that you want. And the second part below is the actual items that you want. Now you actually see here closing price, market value and sales, which are all time series variables. But this screening method kind of only allows you to get the most recent version of this so at the most recent time periods so this will be probably be the market value today or market value and yesterday and the thing that you need to consider here is that you can add previous dates but they're usually inaccurate as far as i know so i would not recommend if you need a time series of say 20 years to put in one of this variable for every year because I don't think the data will be as accurate as it will be in the Excel plugin. So I would not recommend using that. Let's first go to the upper part of this. Here you can remove criteria that you don't want. So say I don't just want S&P 500 firms, I just remove this row. And now I get all the firms in their universe. We previously had 500 firms and now we have one point, well basically over 100,000 firms. But this may be a bit too much, so maybe you don't want all firms. Now, how do you make the selection? Either you can search something in here, so say I want only financials, hey, here are some individual funds or some geography or some specific industry, but this is not as neat as you would have wanted it. So for individual items or specific, very specific items, go here, but it's easiest to click this button. This button allows you to very quickly search what you need. So this is an index if the fund is part of a certain index or a certain region, but this also may be very specific. So if you want to have all US firms, which are non-financial, for example, for some corporate analysis, um, you do it this way. So you don't go selecting on a specific index, but you go to the industry. And then I say, hey, well, for my fact set industry, or you can use the SIG code if you want, it's, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I want all of it, but I don't want the financials. So maybe we do need to go to the SIG code, and I say I have a primary SIG code, and I want to add all of them, but not some financial index. Or maybe I don't want to have the public finance or the uh, justice department or something like that, or private households. Also don't like that. So I say I want to add all of these industries. You simply select them and then you add add. Now what it does is it gives you all of the firms which are in these industries. So if you now also want a private household, it's not in here or the public and justice and safety department or something like that. So this selects the firms within a certain category. So we went from 152,000 to 88,000. 
So it's already quite a reduced number. You can see it here. It's a bit shady. I'll remove this so you can see it more clearly. So here you have selected already some of your, some of your firms on industry. Now we can go a step deeper. Say I want only North American firms, just to be very original. Um, I'm going to add only North America, United States. Here are all the states, but say we don't care which state it is. I just want North America and only the United States because they have usually the most actively available data. There are some people who can argue about this, but usually the United States has the most accurate, up-to-date information, at least the, most, the largest quantity. So now we have 22,000 observations left. This amount is actually workable with an Excel plugin, but still it will take us a long time to do so. So we're going to refine it a little bit more. Say we need not only an exchange, but we have geography, say we want a security, and we only want a primary, uh, the ordinary share. So not the preferred equity or the preferred stock, or I think this is kind of the same, but at least we just want the ordinary shares, so we don't get any other stuff, no funds, no derivatives, no other items, just the ordinary shares. We add that as well, now it's updating again, and we go to the lesser amount of firms. Now, this database tab is kind of useful, because some of you may also have access to WRDS, and it's simply a lot easier to get your information from WRDS as it is from FactSet. Because you can just literally download the whole data set in a matter of seconds and it doesn't cost you any sort of time. So what you could decide is that I want to go for my financials and then I can click the other two databases but not CompuSat. Because CompuSat is also on WRDS. So that's a choice that you can make if you want to and if you have access to WRDS. If you don't, you can just select whichever thing you want. So say we now only want to copy stuff because we already have the other two or we just want to link the identifiers or something like that. So now we add CompuStat to the mix and the item will go down, I think only marginally because a lot of US firms are in CompuStat. So if we would have picked this one instead of the other one, we would lose a lot of firms. If you want to have specific firms in there as well, like just I want Apple or something, uh, let's see if it finds it. Okay, App Apple, then I could add Apple to it but I'm not certain whether this is inclusive or it adds Apple as well. So we should not add Apple here. Let's just remove Apple. So, so for all of the firms in here, none of them were in CompuStat. So we should also add those two, or maybe we should just remove that one, but let's just add all of them and see what happens. And once we add the fact set fundamentals and the HSBC, we probably get a lot more firms. So you can be too selective in what you pick for and therefore there are no firms left. So make sure that you stay as general as possible when you can. You can add specific identifiers, you can add specific brokers. I would not go into this, by the way. Um, this is some other identification search. And here you can add specific variables. I want, I want it only if it has a price larger than something or if it has a price in the, in the first place. So. Here we have our selection. We want some sort of firms from specific industry in North America, which are in these three databases. Can, can happen. Sure, that works. So we have all of this, and now we have all of our firms, all of the firms here below. You see here a couple of 20,000 firms. We have the name, the stock exchange, some economy codes, closing price, market value, and sales. The clue here is to add the firms that have static information. So this, everything in here must be static, otherwise it's not that useful. There are a couple of exceptions, and we'll go to that in the end, but you, start, you should start with static information. So what's the easiest thing, here you add variables, for static information? So this is a whole list, but you need to, you need to find things that don't change. So a QSIP is an identification code. It's usually for North American firms, and we have only North American firms, so a QSIP should cover a lot of the information. So we want to add a specific variable, in this case, a QSIP to identify. You need those identifiers if you want to link this to other databases or want to add bonds or something like that. So you need identifiers. You need them. Just put all of the ones that you can find in there because they don't always overlap as nicely as you want. So here in the search tab, you can click identifier, entity identifier or security identifier find something. And here you have the default faction symbol or any any other items. So if you want to find an ISIN, you're probably not going to find it in this list. You need to find security identifier and then in the top down menu, click an ISIN. 
Now, ice hints are very broadly used, and I would always recommend putting them in your data set if you have them. Now, FactSet has CDLs, QSIPs, and ISITs, but not all of them are complete. That means that some firms have a CDL, some firms have a QSIP, and some firms have an ISIN, but they pr usually don't have all of them. However, they do have tickers, the fact set symbol, or the ticker symbol, or however you want to call it. So a local ticker, a regional ticker, put all of those tickers in there as well, because you are going to need them. You can use the tickers to link to other databases, Bloomberg, WRDS, whatever you have in mind. So you need to have those identifiers in there. Okay, so here we find ourselves, this is some sort of uh, local ticker. We have a QSIP, we have an ISIN, assume that we also have the actual ticker. So, and the symbol also works as a ticker. So we have a lot of information here already. So now we can find the firm and identify them. That's very, very important because you need it for the Excel plugin as well as for any sort of data analysis. Now let's add some other variables. <coughs> we have financials. That's probably the worst thing to search for because they are usually quite fluctuating over time. Reference data, that already makes it a little bit nicer. So say we want to have ourselves um, a country, we want to know where the company is from. Location is always fixed. At least we assume that it's usually fixed. Uh, so, country. Can shares, country, region, price of primary exchange. Name default. So you can just put the, either a code or a name. Let's now just put a name in. So then you get the country of the firm. That's the static. That's nice to have. It's, it's good. Uh, shares outstanding is not a variable that you want because it varies over time because people can add more shares or something like that so you can just go through this whole list and add everything that you could possibly want but there are some additional tricks so you have the industry the country the identifiers most of them are static but there are some tricks to save you up a lot of work once you go to the excel plugin that is just download the variables that you actually want in here and like five or ten years ago or something like that so that you know whether there's information on because not every firm might have for example ESG information so here I had the ESG country something country code or ESG value or uh, let's see if we can find MIS MICS global ESG ratings so it's research rating scores. I just add this thing for environmental or I don't care. You can add a lot of things here, but let's just assume they don't want this one in last month, which is the most recent period, basically. Now I can say, okay, add me that one. And if facts has information on this, it will show up in this variable. So you can't use it to, to actually use the variable, but you can use it to select which variables you need information on. So I know that for this MCIS ESG score, there are about 2,000 firms in the database that have information, not 20,000. So if you would need to run all 20,000 in the Excel plugin, it would take you a lot longer period of time because it's quite time consuming to do that. So this is an easy way to save you up a lot of time. Now say that we also want to have it from say like 2004 on uh, December 1st, just pick something. And I want to add that as well. Now this doesn't work perfectly, so you can't do it for like every time that you want that you want it in your observation. But let's just see what happens if we do this. So we have this ESG score, and there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, a lot of nothing. But maybe once we come across a firm, we see that there's information here, but not there. So it could be that the firm defaulted or got merged before 2020, or that it just like it, it could not exist anymore. So therefore, if you add one or two previous dates or three or five, however many you want, you can make a very quick selection. Hey, this is firm exists. This is firm work. ESG scores are only available as of 2006 in this database, I believe. So if you add like 2014 and eight or something, then it's, it's, it's likely that if there's ESG information, it will be available in at least one of those three cases. So you can simply say, for the firms that I want ESG information on, drop them if there's nothing in these ESG variables. So that goes, saves you, ah, look, here's something, but it's the same here. So it's quite autocorrelated over time, but there's information on it. And here it's only in 2014, but not in 2020, which means that if you would just put in 2020, you would drop this firm, but there is information on it. 
So you kind of need this. So you need to have multiple of those variables so you can quickly screen which variables have ESG information in the first place. Now you can do the same for, for example, total assets to find out whether a firm has accounting information. I suppose that most do, but it's, it's not all of them, actually, surprisingly enough. Um, and you need to add as well some market variables, such as like uh, market cap or something. Just something very, very easy. Market cap, company level, latest compound periods, and then a couple of other items as well. So you can make sure that you have some sort of market variable indicator. Now you have your industry, you have your market variable, you have your accounting variable, you have your special research variable where you, what you want to do research about. So for example, ESG scores, but it could as well be uh, the book to market ratio or uh, some accounting variable that you find very interesting or something like that. So check on all of those variables and then select the firms which actually have them. You should not delete the firms without your specific research variable because you can use the other firms as a benchmark. But this, this is what I would do. So here the firms don't have any market value. But wait, this is a bit strange. None of them have market value today. So either all of them defaulted, which is kind of unlikely, or we have a wrong variable. In this case, we probably have a wrong variable. So if you find something very strange, I would recommend adding multiple variables, which kind of measure the same thing. Because they all have different origins. This one is from Frexet Corporate Actions. This is from Frexet Estimates. The estimates are already less available than corporate actions. Reference data is usually quite available. In fact, it's global, but for some items we might not even have access to. So Switzerland volume daily. I don't, I don't know if you have access to this data bit. So let's just add it in and see if it gives you an error. Because sometimes you can't access a certain database and then it gives you an error and you cannot add the variable. This is because we simply don't have the license. Some of them are very expensive, like market or something like that. So just add a couple of variables, which are quite similar. So this one is absolutely non-related, but to prove a point that some variables are not in the data set, like price or market value company, something like that. Just add some items to see whether there's differences across them. Because if an item is from a different data set, in fact set, it can be different than on another variable, whilst it seems highly similar. So let's move over here. Okay, none of them have closing prices, market value, market value, well, the Swiss volume daily is of course a fluke, so if you don't want them anymore, click here. Click delete, now it's gone. Very easy. This thing we have in there twice, so we delete that one as well. Ah, here we see some market price. This one has no market price, this one has a, uh, oh, this is ESG actually. So it has a closing price, but it's not going to market value. So sometimes you need to compute this yourself. If you know that closing price is more actively available than market value, also pick the shares outstanding and multiply them to get the market value. You need to be a little bit agile with this. So you see here, oh, there's actually the market value, but this one's not the market value. So two variables which seemingly do the same. One of them has information, the other one has not. So delete the ones that you don't need. Here you have your identifier. This firm has all of the identifiers, but often it's not the case. So you only have one of them. But as these are US firms, the data is quite readily available. What does it mean if your firm has no closing price here? It means that the firm nowadays is not listed anymore. That could be because it defaulted, because there are mergers, or maybe there are some other strange reasons why there's no closing price. Maybe the market was just closed yesterday or something like that. But if this thing picks the latest available period, then it's probably that the firm is not listed anymore. So you can say, okay, I don't need the firm. That's perfectly fine possible, you just put it in your statistical software and you drop it if the value is a, a dash or a zero or not available or something like that. And then you are have removed those firms. But it could be that a year ago or a month ago, the firm did still exist. So I personally want to have those in my data set as well, because otherwise you have a survivorship bias. Now we have all of this beautiful information and we want to actually use it. So for aesthetics, this is sufficient. I think you have some sort of industry. You had this, uh, I thought we had an industry somewhere. This is the exchange country name. We also, we had an industry, but we lost it. Let's find a new industry. Uh, sick codes, sick codes, entry data. Just put the sick codes in there. Sick codes, da, da, da. Rank one, you can pick multiple levels, but just throw in some sick codes, see which one sticks. Then we have an industry, we have a name, we have a ticker symbol, we have some sort of identification what data is actually available in your data set. 
and then we have this whole list. So here there's some sick codes, beautiful. We know which industry the firm is in. We know what the name of the firm is, what the we know what the identifiers are. We know whether there was still data available. Now we want to save all this. All you need to do is simply click this button, download to Excel, and it saves your firm. You can also save it here to save the whole request if you want to edit it later. But now, for now, I don't need to. So I'll just Excel download this. Firm. This will take a while. Sometimes it glitches, so you need to put the download button again. But that may be because I had a have a very strict save setting on this thing. So here it will start downloading the file. Then we'll show here once it's completed. So now it does nothing. And now it downloads. It's only two megabytes, so three megabytes. It's very small. But once you go, if you would have not screened this or put the variables in here, it would have been substantially larger because it would have been 150,000 firms. And if they're not in the selection that you want, you should not add them in here because it will make the work in the Excel plugin astronomical. You really want to skim down as much as you can before you go into the Excel plugin. Let's quickly open up this file so you can sh um, look what it. I can show you what it looks like. It's already loading the Excel Excel plugin. We're not going to use that right now, but we'll use it in our next session. So here we have enable editing the file that we just downloaded. We have all the information here. It shows a nice if it doesn't exist, and here is a ticker symbol, the name, and everything is nice and beautifully in this file.